Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Today it's my 2023 EDC update, a video I do annually. And to save a little bit of time, the items that I'm still using in this year's EDC that were in last year's, I will skip. So if you want to find out more about my SanDisk mini player, headphones of choice, my cell phone, and of course my Parker Jotter pens, please refer to last year's video as I'm still using all of those items every single day. However, this year's EDC is rather special as I have some exciting new additions. So let's get into it. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. I'll start off with the wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Seiko Dolce, which I scored off eBay. Incredible part of, uh, or overlooked part of Seiko's quartz history. And just perfect, slides under the cuff. Boom, there you go, look at that. Que capo of all the rest though. Anyway, let's get into the video, shall we? Now I've made several videos about rings, explaining the different types, meanings, etiquettes and traditions that go along with them. So have a look back to find out more. Personally, I wear two. Firstly, matching wedding rings I designed myself based on Victorian Memento Mori designs, as in my opinion, the idea of the most important person in my life wearing something I personally designed rather than something store-bought really appeals to me and makes it feel a little bit more special. Then there is of course my signet ring. For my family, a tradition that goes back to the Middle Ages and possibly even beyond. Again, custom made and explored extensively in a dedicated video. Occasionally I may wear a birthstone or a simple favorite meaningful gemstone to match an outfit. To learn more about the different properties, meanings, and history of all these different types of gemstones, I highly recommend the DK book, which will be in my Amazon store. Now, the correct etiquette is for a gentleman to only wear one ring, uh, the signet ring on his pinky finger on the left side. But of course, I don't adhere to that. This isn't the Middle Ages. This isn't Victorian England. This isn't the Georgian period or the Edwardian age. Uh, you got to wear what is comfortable for you, your style. Some people combine them. So I've seen like, for example, King Charles, he'll wear a wedding ring on the same finger as his pinky. For me personally, I like tradition, the past on this hand, kind of representative of where it came from, and then the future and the present on this hand, if that kind of makes sense. Again, you got to do what makes you happy. When it comes to sunglasses, I pretty much stick to Persol. Timelessly stylish, iconic without being gaudy or flashy, made in Italy, and extremely well I might add, and robust enough to last, with those signature Art Deco hinges. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped mine, and they still work perfectly fine. Interestingly, Persol is a conjunction of the Italian words per il sole, which means for the sun. My go-to for decades has been the rectangular P02747S in a dark translucent blue slash Havana pattern acetate frame with blue photopolarized lenses. To me, the shape complements my very round shaped head and face. And recently I was given a more retro personal P032262S as a Christmas gift. They are in a lighter tortoise shell, so this will now be part of my EDC going forward and I might switch them out depending on my style and mood. Guarda questo caffone with the sunglasses on indoors. Anyway, you can order these directly from uh, Persol or uh, from the Urban Gentry Amazon store. I buy mine from Amazon. I, you can find pretty sweet deals occasionally, so I'll add these and a whole bunch of my favorites. There'll be a link in the description, like every video. My wallet has not changed, so have a look back to last year's EDC for more info. However, this year I will be traveling and have been traveling far more for work, and I was given a beautiful personalized passport holder from the British brand Aspinel of London. 
Not part of my EDC on a daily basis, but worthy to mention as their leather goods are very high quality and always tastefully designed, and I would definitely recommend them. In fact, I'm quite surprised this brand has not been featured in a Bond movie yet, as I think the understated British classicism would rarely suit the Bond character aesthetic perfectly. So some of you may remember this from last year. It's a little sheaf, uh, cheapest chips I bought on Amazon from a brand called Easy Ant, peculiar name, but it's quite literally falling apart. Uh, I don't wear this with uh, more formal attire like this, just for everyday use because it's handy. I got my little flashlight there, which is still the same as last year, one of my knives and a little smaller Fisher pen, so the space pen there. It's just so handy, you know, grab and go, put it on your belt, out the door, that kind of thing. But as you can see, it, the stitching is coming undone and it's literally falling apart. What is good about this is it demonstrates a great point why you should spend extra on leather goods. Unfortunately, I cannot find something similar from the brands uh, that I like to buy my leather goods from. Brands like Aspinall, Carl Friedrich, Smithson of London, for example, they just don't make these. Uh, guys, if you have any recommendations, please do share in the comments. Now, if you look at the wallet I've had for 10 years from my previous EDC, almost 10 years now, look out, the stitching is still intact. The leather has patinaed, it's not this cheap rubbish, but of course, that's what you get when you pay for handmade, Italian-made luxury leather goods. In that instance, it is worth it. I, you know had one of my go-to brands made something like this, I would have bought that instead, but oh well. When it comes to pen knives, folding knives, or some kind of cutting instrument, not much has changed here since last year. It's another tradition that goes back to the Romans, who incidentally invented the folding knife as an EDC essential carried daily, tucked in their togas, no less. Now I have many different knives at all different price points, sizes, and styles from all over the world. From more elegant, smaller, gentlemanly classics like the traditional French luxury Layol knife for more formal situations, which I've discussed before, to more affordable, iconic knives like Victorinox, Opinel, Leatherman, Spyderco, Case knives, and so on. Maybe I should do a state of the collection for my knives. I have done it before and long overdue for an update. I also tend to carry something smaller attached to my keys with a variety of little tools that come in handy. I might need a toothpick or a nail file, scissors, or sometimes a screwdriver. This is a whole rabbit warren to fall into, kind of like watches. So before going down that rabbit hole, I would advise thinking about what is the most useful tool for you, the legality in the country where you reside and plan to carry it, and also which will match your personal style. But my favorite has always got to be the Griptilian here by Benchmade. Made in America, very lightweight, ergonomically just so easy to grip. I love that access lock, very solid. You've got a drop point blade there. This is the semi serrated one, very useful for opening boxes, as I do a lot because, of, you know, watches and so on. I love the clip. Uh, it's just a great size. Cannot give it more praise. There's nothing about it I would change. And I think probably why I love it so much. But number two has to be the French Layol for more, you know, if, if I want a, a little folding knife and I'm dressed like this, obviously this is too tactical. And that's kind of me in a nutshell, you know, I have two overarching genres of watches, two overarching genres of dressing, you know, I'm either casual and more tactical, uh, or I'm more formal and a little bit more, I don't know, dressier, I guess, you know, it, it bleeds into everything. My knives are no different, you know, same with shoes, the same with jackets, all of that stuff, so yeah. So recently I turned 40 and I wanted to commemorate this event with something truly special, something to last a lifetime, a unique work of art that has some personal significance and importance to me, but also I can carry on my person every day. As I already wear enough rings, for me, it leaves me with only one option when it comes to jewelry, and that is a necklace and pendant. This brings us onto a brand I have followed and been a huge fan of their incredible work for many years. We are talking about Olithika. Chavdar Chusev is the talented artist behind the brand. He is a world-renowned master of the ancient art of gem carving. His unparalleled expertise in the field 
has been accumulated over 40 years. So when I reached out to them to see if they wanted to collaborate, they were not only willing to create a special piece for me, but also kindly sponsor the production of this video. So as you guys know, I don't do sponsored videos very often. The reason is because I'm extremely fussy and picky of who I collaborate with. I only want the very best for my audience. Well, Alifica are the best in their field. I've been a fan of theirs for ages. So as you can imagine, it's an enormous honor uh, and a massive thank you to them for sponsoring the production of this video. Very excited about this. There we go. There's the branding Alifica with that charming little owl logo there oh excited about this <laughs> right drum roll please let's unbox it right let's open her up ah oh, there it is oh carnelian oh my god you can already see it this is amazing there it is oh my god look at that that is absolutely beautiful look 18 karat setting nice big bale there uh, i've got several chains that i'm going to try this with one i actually even bought specially for this so look at that let's zoom right in wow that's marcus aurelius of course oh, and it's signed by the master craftsman so let's have a little bit of uh, a look at the history of this style of uh, engraving and pendant the ancient art of gem engraving was developed at the very dawn of civilization, about five to six thousand years ago in Mesopotamia. The first of which appeared in the form of cylinder seals, used either as a talisman, amulet or a device to personalize and secure documents. Now I've done a whole video on signet rings, so we are talking about a period even further back, before the craftsmen refined their techniques and tools that allowed the engraving of a gem miniaturized in scale small enough to be placed on the ring. Incidentally, Olithica do offer this service too, if pendants are not your cup of tea. And I must admit, I was very tempted by this as well. What is absolutely astonishing about Olithica, and unlike anyone else that offers this kind of service, is that they utilize the mastery of both ancient and modern techniques, kind of taking the best of both worlds. And the result is not only something historically accurate, but also with the refinement that comes with contemporary technology. So they look ancient, but at the same time, arguably better than any engraving ever achieved by mankind by hand before. Some of you may recall in my 2022 EDC video, I had a pendant made from a Roman coin depicting the Emperor Marcus Aurelius. Now, I was very careful to source that coin from the UK to represent my confluence of being British and Roman, essentially. So it's representative of that shared heritage, but also because Marcus Aurelius wrote my favorite book of all time, a book I constantly reread and go back to, which is something I do urge you to do, um, is to reread classic books. There's always something else to be learned. But the point being is that that book gave me strength in so many of the darkest periods of my life. It's something I always uh, go back to for guidance. Um, it's something that I connect to. I'm sure everybody has a book like that in their own lives. I was kind of inspired by Kurt Cobain and he always carried the book Perfume around on him. That was the inspiration for many of his songs. Now, obviously, I'm not in a band called Nirvana and I'm not <laughs> writing music, but the life advice, you know, so Marcus Aurelius is a role model. That is why he is the subject of my pendant. Out of the many gemstones they offer, I decided on the semi-precious carnelian, not just for its rich, reddish, translucent beauty, but also because it was favoured greatly by the Romans in their jewellery. Then by the British, centuries later, in their signet rings, and has a history that goes all the way back, before both, to ancient Egypt. Carnelian's meaning is known for being a stone of courage, endurance, energy, leadership and motivation. As for the carving itself, we based it on an impression of an intaglio engraved by the esteemed British carver, Nathaniel Merchant. I felt it was the most iconic, indicative, and instantly recognizable depiction of Aurelius. As you can imagine, this kind of jewelry is not cheap. These finely carved gemstones were also a staple of luxury back in antiquity, and served as extraordinary symbols of status, and in certain cases, they were believed to provide divine protection. 
They were also employed as a form of personal identification when pressed in hot wax or clay, a bit like the signet rings we discussed in a previous video. Rulers, nobles and wealthy merchants sought, collected and traded these fascinating miniature works of art. So for me, the price is absolutely totally worth it. And kind of like a watch, it becomes a family heirloom for the future. I can't even begin to tell you the amount of sentimental value that the jewellery, personal items, pocket knives for that matter, and timepieces that once belonged to my grandfather and personal role model, GHW, what they mean to me. So I'm starting a new tradition here, which you can too. In terms of price, as this may vary in what you'd like to have engraved, materials, etc. If you are interested, I would advise reaching out to Alex at Olithica for a quote. So here it is, and as I hold it up, the, the lights of the studio are passing through it, and I can see that really deep engraving. It's stunning. Um, un meraviglia questo. Spettacolare. And I've sourced this chain. Uh, maybe I'll do a video about chains because there's a lot to discuss here. The length, the thickness, the style, uh, the material, all of these kind of things. But I wanted something kind of with the link curvy to echo the setting, this, this oval shaped setting. So this is very traditional. And uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I can't believe it. So I'm going to treasure this for the rest of my life. To have a unique work of art on your person. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. I'm almost a little bit scared to wear it, to be honest, I have to say. But yeah, I'll treasure this. It's just stunning. Last, but by no means least, we have to include a little horology here and some watch-related items. In my last travel vlog slash watch review video, I discussed my most worn watches of the year so far and how my watch tastes have evolved and how my collecting is changing. The past 12 months, I have to say I've been really getting into more unusual shaped watches with a mix of either super tooltastic macho icons like the indelible Panerai Luminor or more dressy pieces like the Universal Genève White Shadow and Cartier Santos. My top favorite watches remain largely the same, my Rolex Explorer, while worn less, its influence nonetheless is still permeating into many watch designs and will continue to do so. The Breitling Navi Timer is still one of those watches that I battle with myself almost daily not to buy multiple variations. And of course, there's the never-ending various Squale, Seikos, and I'm still hankering after a Porsche design or Fina from Top Gun, but we'll talk about my watch goals in a future video. So my last addition to my EDC is, yeah, from Cartier, here it is. And this is a gift I received for my birthday, um, something I will treasure for the rest of my life. I'm showing you the box because Cartier always do an amazing job packaging their stuff. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a watch or jewelry, uh, I've bought pens, I've bought all kinds of stuff, bags uh, for family members and gifts. And they always come beautifully wrapped. Oh, there's a little bag for extra loops. There's a little booklet there, but this is it. There we are. And this is the Cartier Santos belt. So I have belts for more casual, but I wanted something for more formal. And as you can see, it has the iconic rectangular case there of the Santos. Now I do wish they did a two-tone, but I'll settle for gold. I think let's, let's go all the way, you know? And they've even personalized it with TGV there. Isn't that absolutely pure class? Look at that. It is even reversible. So it's got a brown, dark brown on one side, but I like uh, the all black there. With the little mini screws and everything. Being a fan of the Santos, it's so much more tasteful than the um, Hermes H or the uh, the Gucci G or the LV LV, you know. I think they're always a little bit, I don't know, a little bit corny in my opinion. So this is something a bit more personal, you know. You don't see many of these out in the wild, so. Voglio dire, um, mille grazie a qualcuno molto speciale. Um, ti voglio bene. You know who you are. Right, so there we have it. Please do add your recommendations for essential EDC items. Your favorite watches of the year, your favorite knives, your favorite kind of belts, whatever, uh, wallets, all of that good stuff in the comments below. I love hearing your feedback. Also, don't forget to like this video if you want to see more free uh, content like this. Thank you for watching onwards and upwards.